Yeah, I think I'm on. Okay, let's sing together. You were despised, you were rejected, Lord, those who pass by even averted their gaze from the sight. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Led like a lamb, lamb to the slaughter, you spoke not a word. Chose to be silent though you did no wrong, nor was deceitfulness found in you. Yet by your wounds our salvation has come, yet by your suffering our freedom is won. For God has highly exalted your name has enthroned you on high, Jesus, the name above all names. For God has highly exalted your name. He has enthroned you on high, Jesus, the name above all You were rejected, Lord, those who passed by Even averted their gaze from the sight Such was the suffering you bore for us Led like a lamb, a lamb to the slaughter You spoke not a word, but chose to be silent Though you did no wrong nor was deceitfulness found in you. Yet by your wounds our salvation has come, yet by your suffering our freedom is won. For God has highly exalted your name, He has enthroned you on high, name above all names. For God has highly exalted your name. He has enthroned you on high. Jesus' name above all One of the wonderful things that we can do, we are together, is to share in communion. Communion is that part of the worship of the church that transcends cultures and ages and geographical boundaries. It happens with Christians all around the world, in any country you can think of, and in any setting. And it is because... It helps us to look back and realize just how much God loves us. And I know that every single one of us would need reminders throughout the week that we are loved by the people around us. And different people have their different love language. For, for some people, um, buying them some flowers is really uh, a sign of love and appreciation. For other people, um, buying some chocolate and sharing it with them, that's always a, a sign of love. Many, many things that we can do to show our love for one another. But Jesus had shown his love for us as he gave his life on the cross. And every single time Christians are gathering together and they eat the bread and drink the cup, they're reminding themselves afresh of the love of Jesus. So this is what we wanted to do. So if you've got your bread, get, get it ready. 
the author to the Hebrews, and Dave read from Hebrews as well, so I'm reading from Hebrews, wrote these words. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have now been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. This is what Jesus has done for us. He has enabled sinful people to be able to have a relationship with a holy God. He is not just doing that through his death on the cross, but he's doing that daily as he cleanses us. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took some bread and after breaking it, he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Let's eat with thankful hearts. On that same night, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood that I'm making with you. Let's drink this with thankful hearts. Jesus, we thank you again as we remember your broken body and your shed blood. They are the most powerful declaration of love we could ever experience. And Jesus, it's what brings us together this morning. All these different faces, different ages, but with different stories. People with different political views, people living in different locations, all brought together by the love of Jesus. We are your body. We are the church because you loved us and you called us your own. And Jesus, we're so thankful and grateful this morning and we want to bless your name. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to hand over to Beth Taylor, who's going to lead us in prayer um, and we would love for you to, after she shares with us, to join in prayer. And if you do, please don't forget to unmute yourself. Otherwise, we can't hear you if you would like to pray. And we'd like to hear as many people pray. Beth, over to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Christy kindly asked me to lead prayers, which I'm really, really quite uncomfortable <laughs> But just nervous about. I've really prayed this week about what God wants um, wants us to share and wants us to focus on. And the thing that's come back to me um, through various different um, ways and to other people um, is about standing in the gap. Mm -hmm. And I've had that about three times. I've just heard God say it's about standing in the gap. So I looked um, I looked it up because I'm not the best Bible scholar among you. And it's a passage that comes from Ezekiel. So I'm just going to uh, read it to you. It's Ezekiel uh, 22.30. Um, he records the word of God. And God said, I looked for someone among them who would be able to 
stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so that I would not have to destroy it. I found no one. And what really struck me about that is that um, God actually went looking for someone. He went looking for someone in that case who would stand in the gap for um, a sinful Jerusalem. But I really feel that we can apply those words to ourselves as well, because the Bible is full of examples, isn't it, of people who stood in the gap. Um, Abraham stood in the gap for Sodom. He pleaded with God. Stephen prayed for those who stoned him. Um, Esther, I love the story of Esther. Esther stood in the gap with prayer and fasting for her people. And Paul prayed for Israel's salvation. He also asked others repeatedly in his uh, letters to pray for him. And of course, what we've just celebrated and done together, there Jesus um, is kind of the master of standing in the gap, isn't he? Mm. And the parable that Ian spoke about as well, about the lost coin, shows us something of God's heart and his real um, sort of demonstration, really, of caring for us, that he will just seek the lost and the broken and rejoice when they are found. So this morning, I just think, like all those um, Bible characters, we also need to be reminded that we have a privilege of, like, really proactively mm. um, standing on behalf of our family, of our friends, and of our community. So... Mm. If we can this morning pray um, and stand in the gap really for those people who God has really laid on our hearts. I know that it's really laid on my heart, our, our community, and I feel that when we, if we pray for individuals and who, who God's really laid on our hearts and members of our church, <laughs> I think we also need to bring um, before God our communities of North Lancashire and South Lakes and um, really ask him to direct us where he would have us stand really in this. Just bring them before him. And then mm -hmm. that, um, I'll just close in a prayer at the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Father, I just want to thank you that you have brought us together. And then when we come together in prayer, there is so much power in that. There's a picture of, um, of locked shields together that form a wall. And Lord, we know that you honour our prayers, that you seek our prayers, that you go out and you nudge our hearts with your spirit to pray for the things that you would have us stand in the gap for. Father, this morning, I just pray that you would um, show each one of us in our hearts the gap that you would have us stand in. And we just bring that before you today. Mm. Father, we want to stand in the gap for those who are a long way away. And we think particularly this morning of the mm. Miriam and Rob Dixon and the problems they have in their flat. Father, we mm. pray for a breakthrough there, that uh, those things would be put right, and also for their um, connections with the minority groups around, that you would mm. enable that mm. breakthrough with them. Mm. But Father, again, particularly, we want to pray for Jez and Lois and baby Damaris. Father, as they've been through a, a really tough 24 hours with Damaris and uh, problems with her breathing. Father, we pray that you would bring healing there, you would ease her breathing, that she'd be able to feed mm. properly again, mm. give wisdom to the doctors at the mm. hospital. And for Lois particularly, as she um, is on her own there, Father, will you comfort her? May she know that she's standing on a firm foundation and Bring them home with Damaris recovered. Mm. We pray. Amen. Amen. Oh.
Father, I want to stand in the gap for all the elderly and vulnerable and thank mm. you that so many have had mm. uh, the vaccine. Mm. Um, Father, thank you that um, we care about the vulnerable just like um, Jesus did. And Father, I pray that more will get vaccinated and I pray that the vaccines will be effective. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Mm. Amen. Father, we pray for those that live uh, nearest to us, whether we live on a street and the, their um, neighbours that live just a few doors away from us or whether they live a, um, a, a distance away, whoever our nearest neighbours are, we pray for them individually. Lord, you know each one of them. You know whether they, they know you or not. They are still precious to you and... Uh, mm. For those who don't know you, uh, you are still seeking them out. You, you mm. tell us that they're, 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 that you seek out the lost, and so help us, Lord, um, to to see each one as you see them. We lift them to you this morning, whatever their particular problems, whether they live alone or whether they've got families, whether they're um, whether they've been badly affected by this. Um, covid or or whether they seem to be riding it out whether they're young families or whether they're elderly each one is known by you and we mm. pray for them now lord and and ask that each one of them on this this your day we pray that each one of them if they don't know you will will get to know you and if they do know you that they'll be celebrating mm. with us uh, in, in their own way and in their own homes. And we ask this, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Lord, I just pray for all who are blessed to still be working, that uh, we would stand in the gap for our colleagues, Lord. Many of us mm. will work with lots of people who don't know you and would profess mm. not to want to know you, Lord. But I ask that we would stand up and stand in the gap, Lord. Oh, yeah. Well, we stand in the gap for those that consider on the fringes of society, on the, on the uh, edges of our society, and remember those who are destitute and addicted to drugs or other things, or mm. those addicted to sin or alcohol. We stand in the gap for those, Lord. Heavenly Father, we live in the locations that you have ordained by your sovereign power and will. And Heavenly Father, we pray that we can know each and every one of us what it is to stand for you, stand okay. firm for the sake of a gospel in those locations. We pray for our neighbours and our families and our friends, Lord, that we may know what it is to stand upright for you. Lord, we pray that we may also know what it is to stand in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, not in our own strength, in the strength that you so richly supply. Mm. Heavenly Father, we just pray for our testimonies that it may mm. be strong and firm and courageous. Yeah. And Lord, that many may come to know and trust in you as Lord and Saviour. Mm. Oh, you're a great God. We just praise you this morning in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. 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 Lord, we stand in a gap for those who are suffering following floods and snow for Lord, pray that they would be rescued from the place of rescue, not only physically, but in you, Lord. Amen. Father, I want to pray for all the hospital workers, for all the people who are serving us, Lord, in supermarkets, mm. for the people who deliver our food. Mm. We want to thank you, Father, that we suddenly realize how important these people are. And Lord, we want to bring them before you. And where they are tired or anxious or um, just plain, um, maybe uh, frustrated with the, the way things are going, Father, we just pray that you will come by the power of your spirit. Mm. And whether mm. you believe in you or not, Lord, 
We ask that your spirit would touch them deeply, Lord, at this time, and that they would be valued by their communities, Lord. And uh, that, Father, we pray, Lord, that at the end of all this awful thing, Lord, that has come upon us, that there will be a great repentance in the nation, that the nation will come before you, Lord, in, in the white spirit, and that, Father, you will send a revival to this land. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all lost sheep that you are searching for, the ones that you are working on right now, that they will come to the place that you are bringing them to, where they will serve mm. in their fullness and in repentance, and they will come to you wholeheartedly and serve you as they have uh, been planned to serve you, Lord, as you desire. Help us as we help others to come to that point, but help us to come to that point also, Lord. Please sing the precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just lift those in our communities and our neighbourhoods and in our church. Let's begin with those of us who follow you. Help us to influence others for good. Pray that we'll be salt and light, helping others to you. Deepen our love for you and for those around us. Lord. God has been hypocrisy and for belief and prejudice that cause harm the cause of Christ. We pray within our communities that you would turn the hearts of fathers towards their children. Mm -hmm. Help us to show your values and your love to the people around us and make us bold in our faith, Lord. Strengthen our own families and those who are closest to us. And may our love for you help us to love and to forgive others and to make mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you, Beth, um, for leading us there, and we will continue. Those things will will carry on on our yeah. hearts in terms of standing in the gap for for those around us. Ian, over to you. Right. Um, we're going to think for just a few moments this morning about the, the final four verses of Philippians chapter one. Uh, and just before you just before you turn to it, I would like you to, to look at the screen in front of you and uh, just have a scan round looking at your brothers and sisters as part of our family and just notice how many people are wearing glasses. Okay, just see, just kind of a quick notice. And then if it's uh, not too personal question, if you're wearing contact lenses, you want to just pop, pop your hand up if you're wearing contact lenses. Okay, so there's a few people wearing contact lenses. All right, good. You can you can find Philippians chapter one now. Um, I just want to um, kind of think, if you don't wear glasses or contact lenses, just think for a moment about what it must be like to wear glasses. Okay, to, um, to be able to see, but then you put on glasses just to sharpen that up a little bit to... Um, to be able to uh, kind of see things crisper or clearer or, or more uh, accurately, maybe in the long, long distance or, or maybe the short, or just to clear things up a little bit. Um, what we're going to be thinking about in these first, these kind of last four verses, sorry, of Philippians chapter one, is I think that, that Paul is asking us to um, see life, to see what happens to us and what's happening around us and to see the world through gospel glasses. To see, um, to see the world through, through the eyes of, of the truth of the gospel, to see um, what's happening in the light of who Jesus is and what he's done and what he is doing. Okay, so um, I'm going to read them 
And then we'll just look at two things, two of the verses, um, really simply this morning. So Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, Paul says this. He says, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now here I still have. So, as Paul often does, he packs it all into a few sentences. And we're just going to pull out a couple of things for us to think about. First, the first one is verse 27. Paul says, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. If we're going to live well in this world, then we need to see that what happens to us and what happens around us and what's going on in our world. We need to see it in the light of the truth. We need to see it in the light of, um, of what God is doing. And, and what it means to him. So for a moment, I just want to notice um, how Paul lived this out while he was in Philippi. So you're not going to read it now, but maybe if you have time later today, you could read Acts chapter 16, which is the, the background to um, Paul in Philippi and how the church started there. Um, and it would be, would be useful to do that. But I just want to look at how Paul lived in that little season and how he lived out, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. So to begin with, he arrives in Philippi, uh, this prominent Jewish scholar, this um, incredibly knowledgeable and influential uh, man. And what he would usually do when he arrived somewhere, he would go to the synagogue and he would proclaim to those looking for a Messiah that the Messiah had arrived. But when he arrived in Philippi, he didn't, wasn't greeted by a large crowd or expectancy. Instead, he just found a small group, just a few um, uh, women who met for prayer. And Paul could have, could have said, well, he could have got cross about who wasn't there. He could have got upset. He could have moved on because it looked so insignificant. But he didn't. He saw what was happening through gospel glasses. He saw the people in front of him and he started right there. He saw the people in front of him and he started right there and he invested in them. And a little church was born in Lydia's house. Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. He valued the people in front of him, even if it wasn't the people he expected or the people who that culture thought could do anything significant. As he went on, he, uh, he was followed by a slave girl who was possessed by a demon by which he predicted the future. And Paul, he could just have left her. He could just have ignored her like everyone else was doing. But he reached out with courage and compassion. And he saw what was actually happening. He saw a precious little girl suffering and courageously and at great cost and with great compassion, he reached out. In that situation where everyone else was overlooking her, he saw what was actually happening. Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then he faced the persecution after um, doing something kind and compassionate. He was, uh, he and Silas were taken. Uh, they were taken by the mob. They were stripped. So imagine the, the, the fear, the humiliation of, of that had been in a crowd and beaten and flogged and imprisoned. And, and he would have every right to complain at the injustice, to be angry at the, uh, the injustice that he'd, he'd faced. He would have every right to be upset, but instead in Acts 1625 we read as he's in prison about midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God it's not that they appreciated or wanted that persecution but in it they saw they were sharing in the suffering of Christ that they were they were still under his sovereign hand their eyes were still fixed on him even though they were going through incredible trial and injustice and hurt and they saw, they just, uh, they just trusted. Um, not that it was easy, not that it was simple, not that there was any answers, 
but it held on. And then incredibly, as you probably know, the story keeps going. There's an earthquake, the doors of the prison fly open. And remarkably, Paul and Silas um, stay put. And out of compassion and care for the jailer, who would be have his life demanded of him if he lost the prisoner, they stayed put. And they uh, uh, and they they stayed there when they could have gone. Even they could have even said, "Well, this is God freeing us from this injustice." But they stayed. They stayed and saw the opportunity uh, to speak to the jailer who who became a Christian, who gave his life to the Lord. Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And then they left town. They were escorted out by the magistrates, and uh, and remarkably, they just kind of lay this little marker in the sand. Uh, there's a magistrates kind of have to respect them and uh, there's this little kind of sense of protecting this tiny church left in Philippi you know they they Paul and Silas just chose to act in a way that would um, bless their brothers and sisters they were leaving behind and then finally as he writes this letter he's in this house arrest it could um, he could be um, incredibly bitter about that. He could be really sad, but he said, don't be fooled. This is for the extension of the kingdom of God. Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. In, in, in all gentleness, I want to ask us this week, in whatever situations there are around us or in us, let's uh, seek to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Let's try and see situations through gospel lenses, gospel glasses. Let, let's ask, <laughs> let's ask who's on the phone. No, let's ask, what does this mean to Jesus? This, what, what does this situation mean to Jesus? And then secondly, and, and really, really short, um, let me just read verse 29, because it's not an easy verse. It said, Paul says, for it's been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. It would be easy to race past this verse. But let, let's not. Without putting on gospel glasses, it can be very easy to assume that, that life and maybe even our own walk with God, our own salvation is about us, about our comfort or our opinion, or our goals, or getting us to where we want to be. But that's not the case. Just as it's just as we've been entrusted with all the delights of following Jesus, we're also entrusted with the challenges and the suffering that that brings. And the Lord Jesus has entrusted each of us with a story. He's entrusted each of us with a story, and, and sometimes... Those chapters, some of the chapters in that story can be difficult, uh, can be hard, may even involve suffering. And that doesn't mean that God doesn't care about us or doesn't love us, but it means he's entrusting us with that story. Just consider for a moment, if the goal of our salvation was um, our, our, our comfort, uh, our, our joy at the end of all our trouble, then we'd be taken to glory when we're saved but the lord leaves us in this earth and asks us to join him in his kingdom building work he he says let your story the story i've entrusted to you let that become part of my story let me weave that into what i'm doing in this world and just as god's way was to send the lord jesus to come into this world himself to put others first, to love and to suffer for others. So we are asked to follow in those footsteps, to follow in that example. And as we, uh, at times, as we share in that suffering, then we, we understand our saviour on whole other levels. We're drawn into closeness with him on a, on a, a level that I, I, it's hard to put into words, maybe even mysterious. And there's, a, there's a, something powerful that takes place. I'm sure in this room there are many stories of, um, of, of suffering and, um, and gospel expansion through it. As I close, let me just mention three things. Firstly, what I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we look for suffering or difficulty or hardship. We're not, we're not taking a perverted pleasure in that. We're not at all. We're not stoic. 
We're not aiming to suffer. Nor am I saying that when we pass through hard times, we don't cry out to God for him to heal, to save, to deliver. Of course we do, and God often does and, and carries us through always. But what I am saying is that we perhaps don't need to be surprised when challenge comes. For it's been granted to us on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but perhaps to suffer for him. This week, how can we conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ? Let's ask as we go through this week, what does this, what does this situation, whatever it is, what does this mean to Jesus? And, uh, and let's entrust our story, the one we've been given to him, that it will be weaved into his story to somehow um, be made glorious as he weaves into an eternal story of salvation, redemption, and goodness. I'm going to hand back to Christy. Great. A great reminder from Paul's own life and experience. And I think in this season, we, we find points of connection with him through the things that he was experiencing uh, as a follower of Jesus, finding hardship and uh, limitations. Can I encourage you to, um, we will uh, upload this on YouTube, just a, an audio of the service. So um, maybe just revisit it. Um, the, the message Ian just brought it, maybe open uh, your own Bible in your quiet time in that passage and delve delve deeper and let it sink into your heart and as well as you unpack it at the connect groups just shares ways in which challenging circumstances we can um, still honor him and uh, and <coughs> show that actually in the midst of the difficulties he is still sufficient for everything that we need we're going to close the service and uh, there's some verses from scripture that I think would be good to take to heart um, with us this morning. Some verses from Psalm 29, verse 11. This is a promise I, I want to take to heart as I'm stepping into another week. And those things that are given to us there are a real encouragement. This is what a psalmist is saying. Psalm 29, 11. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. I don't know about you, but both those things, I want to say amen. I want to say, Lord, bring it. I need your strength and I need your peace. In the midst of weakness and frailty, we need God's strength. In the midst of uncertainty and anxiety, we need God's peace. So take those words to heart the lord will give strength to his people the lord will bless his people with peace before i pray just want to remind you that there is no zoom tonight um we made this the focus today um and um, everything else is continuing throughout the week just encourage you to sign up to the mailchimp that caroline is sending out because that has all the information of everything that is happening to the week, all the regular things. We don't want to bombard you with too much information. So it will be helpful if you use it as a, um, a virtual uh, newsletter for the week with all the logins. Uh, so everything is written in there. Maybe just uh, cast your eye on it with the times of the events and everything that is happening. So that being said, God bless you. Have a good rest of the Sunday. And we, we, we keep continuing to pray for one another. And just a reminder as well that Connect Group leaders were meeting tomorrow night. So you can unmute yourself and say goodbye to everyone and create absolute and utter chaos. Bye.